Hello and welcome to the solutions of uh, today's uh, minor paper that was uh, on introduction to logic and uh, we will see what was the solution of this paper. You can also <coughs> uh, put your suggestions or your comments uh, in the uh, below part in case you have any doubt or any question. So let us go to the solutions. So let us try to understand that uh, what were the types of questions you must have got the set A, B, C or D. Uh, but all of the sets were having the same types of questions and the same questions in fact and even the order was not changed so I don't think so that uh, there was any problem with that. So I am providing you the solution <coughs> of set A which is the same for B, C, D as well. So these were the objective type questions. Now if you see the first question, if we derive P from P dot P then it is only possible through thought logic. Now many of you might have <coughs> felt that these are two statements but actually it is a false statement. Because from uh, P dot P, you can also derive P with the help of uh, simplification, which is a rule of uh, inference rather than the rule of replacement, which is dot logic. From P dot P, you can definitely derive P with the help of dot logic, but it is not the only way. <coughs> uh, there is the other way. The other way is that you can derive uh, P from P dot P with the help of the rule of simplification. So this was a false statement. Uh, the second question was if P1, P2 and P3 are the premises and C is the conclusion of an argument, then P1 and P2 and P3 implies C is A, whether it is a tautology or contradiction. Now the thing is, and it is very interesting, you can only lose marks in this question if you have not attempted it, because either ways, if you write tautology, it is an answer, <coughs> or if you write contradiction, then also it is an answer. answer. If the argument is valid, then P1 dot P2 dot P3 implies C will always be a topology. Whereas if uh, it is an invalid argument, then it can be <coughs> a contradiction as well. Both of them were the right solution. So either one of them, if you have written, whether you have written tautology or whether you have written contradiction, you will get full marks for it. So this was it. And this was a giveaway question. So if you have attempted this question and you have not got confused, so uh, it will get you marks because there was nowhere written that whether it is a valid argument or an invalid argument. So both the answers are right. Next question was today's Tuesday is whether it is an a priori proposition or an a posteriori proposition. So you know that it is an a posteriori proposition because it is a contingently true statement. That means since today is Tuesday, so it is true today, but it will be false the next day or the day before as well. So uh, today's Tuesday is definitely an a posteriori proposition. The next question was a sound argument cannot have a false conclusion, which is true because a sound argument is defined as a valid argument which is having true premises and true conclusion. So it cannot have a false conclusion. So the statement was true. The next question was a very interesting question. It looks very innocent that uh, rules of inference are invalid or valid argument forms. Now that's why it is interesting because we know that rules of inference are valid argument forms. But if I write either they are valid or they are invalid, from a logical point of view this is always going to be a true statement. It is like having a structure of a tautology. It is like P wedge negation of P. So if rules of inference are either in, are invalid arguments or they are valid argument forms and <clears throat> one of the statements is true. In this case, it is the rules of inference are valid argument form is always going to be true. So uh, true wedge false will always give you a true result. So the answer was true. Though it looks very innocent and very simple, but many of you might have faltered in that. Uh, it is a very simple uh, statement which says that it is a tautology and since it is a tautology, so it is true. Next question was soundness is a necessary condition of validity. Now, uh, as you might be aware of that, uh, validity is a necessary condition for soundness, whereas soundness is a sufficient condition for validity. So the answer for this question was false. Let us come to the uh, truth table question. Now, the truth table question was that the negation of an exclusive disjunction is logically equivalent to a material by condition. This is something which you have to show or draw with the help of the truth table. So first, let us try to understand that what is an exclusive disjunction. An exclusive disjunction is true uh, only when one of the components of the disjunction is true. <clears throat> if both of them are true, then it is going to be false. And if none of them is true, then also it is going to be a false. 
it is like saying and uh, the symbolization of that question uh, will come a little bit later in the symbolization section when i can say that somebody likes tea or coffee but not both so that is basically an understanding of exclusive destruction so if you see the truth table so we will make the truth table like this so we have the p and the q then we will make p wedge q and then we will make negation of p dot q and then we will have a conjunction like this is like p or q and not the case that p and q right so if if you have made this truth table you will find that the answer is false true true and false so if i'm talking about this fourth uh, column or more, whatever in the uh, whatever we will like to call it so the answer is false true true false now when you go for the negation of that the answer will be true false false true that is the next slide right and if you see the material biconditional truth table so you know that uh, the material biconditional truth table is true false false true so they are exactly equivalent and this is something which we wanted you to draw so if you have drawn the truth table like this you will get the full mass for it the next question was about symbolization so let us uh, and you also have to uh, give us the scheme of activation for the symbolization so they were pretty simple ones this time so the first question was today is tuesday since uh, yesterday was monday and tomorrow is uh, wednesday so if you see that it is basically a conjunction of three proposition today is tuesday yesterday was monday and tomorrow is uh, wednesday so it is just simply put it like p dot q dot r though you have to provide what is p here in this question p is today's tuesday uh, q is yesterday was monday and r is tomorrow is wednesday similarly uh, the next was brahmastra is a bollywood movie released in 2022 now if you see this is not a simple proposition it is as a compound proposition which is again a conjunction of two proposition the first proposition will be brahmastra is a bollywood movie and the second one is brahmastra released in 2022 Now many of you might be having this thing that if I uh, symbolize it just like P, so is it a problem? Yes, it is a problem. The reason behind that is that if you are symbolizing it just like P, so it is not remaining as a simple proposition. The first idea of symbolization is that you have to break down the complex proposition or the compound proposition into simple proposition. So the simple proposition was Brahmastra is a Bollywood movie, and second one is Brahmastra released in 2022. so these two propositions have to be made so the symbolization will be p dot q the next question was dhoni continues as captain of csk just is, uh, just in case he is physically fit now this is basically a material biconditional or as we call as the if and only if function because just in case is not symbolized as implication rather than it is uh, symbolized as a biconditional that means an equivalent So Dhoni continues as captain of CSK if it is taken as P, and uh, Dhoni is physically fit is taken as Q. So the symbolization of this question will be P triple bar Q. The next question was Stankovic likes either black or green tea, but not both. And this is what the exclusive disjunction does. So you can see that uh, Stankovic likes either black uh, or green tea. That means Stankovic likes black tea. This is P. Stankovic likes green tea this is q so we symbolize it as p not both that means negation of p dot q so the full symbolization was p wedge q dot negation of p dot q so this was the symbolization and you have to take care of the brackets as well as you can see that if you do not put a bracket even outside that will not uh, have any problem because it will still remain an ambiguous expression but if you put the negation inside or somewhere else so those can create a little bit of problem but <clears throat> this was basically the symbolization of it now next we will move to the proof now if you see this is the question which was given to you that x is uh, equivalent to y negation of x dot y and uh, z implies x therefore negation of y which z so a very simple solution there can be uh, more than one solutions for this there can be many ways in which people can solve this question but the simplest way of solving this question will be like this uh, if we open the first line as x dot y wedge negation of x dot negation of y so this will be like we open it with the help of material equivalence that and we can use ds on 4 and 2 that means the if you uh, operate uh, negation of x dot y 
on the fourth line you will find that we can apply ds over there so the next line will be negation of x dot negation of y then you can simplify negation x from that and from negation x if you apply it on z implies x so here you will get uh, negation of z with the help of modus tollens and after that you can also uh, first commute and then simplify negation of y from line number 5 and uh, you can uh, conjoin negation of y and negation of z with the help of uh, conjunction uh, on line number 8 and line number 7 and then you can definitely apply the modus law on line number 10 and you will get the answer so this was a pretty simple question uh, not even a tricky question still as i can see that many people faltered here and many people have also written that it is an invalid arithmetic and so on but it was purely valid perfectly valid and this was a simple proof of that thank you very much for watching